before the video starts, just let me know if you guys want to see any specific guides. Maybe not like the the long guides like this where I try to cover almost everything or everything about what to do with the champion. But if you want to see a guide based on ganking or based on farming or like power spikes or something like that, then I can definitely make shorter guides based on that stuff. If you guys want to see that, then just let me know and I'll get right on it. So please, thank you for watching the video. Welcome everybody to the video. This is the second guide. You guys have been asking me for a bunch of different things like what the rune setup is and what the masteries are. Well, not the masteries, but you guys have been asking me a bunch of different things like maybe how to play Rengar a little bit differently and ganking especially. So today I'm coming I'm coming over here to give you guys exactly what you asked for. And we're gonna get we're gonna take a little bit more of a an in-depth look. Not too in-depth, obviously. We're not doing a 60-minute guide video on Rengar. But we are going to take a look at the seven, uh, patch 7.4, or maybe 7.5, because the last guide I did was maybe like 7.1, back when Crit Rengar was the way to go. But now, we are going to take a look at Lethality Rengar. So before we hop into the builds and how to play Rengar, first we're going to take a look at the Masteries and the Runes, just so you guys can get a good idea of what to do before you get into the game, just like last time. So first for the masteries, we have 12, 18, 0. We're going to be taking T-Lords, obviously. It's the exact same mastery setup because it hasn't changed. It's still really good. Take Green Father's Gift when you can because this mastery is built for Rengar. But the first two in each tree, the Fury, the Attack Speed, and the Ability Power, you can switch those out if you want. I just take the Ability Power. It's nicer on your W, especially since right now you're not building around uh, auto attacks. But then in the blue tree you don't have to start with the with extra damage to minions you can deal uh you instead of taking that you can go with extra move speed instead out of combat move speed which isn't bad but it definitely doesn't help you as much with your early clear as the other one does because then you get more damage on minions and monsters so it's definitely a nicer choice for me at least to take the extra damage especially since that makes your your early clear is so much better you can get ahead of your jungler and you can get to your gank earlier than what they might you know it's just it's kind of up to you which one you want to choose but either or it's still so works nice so this, now we have the masteries and this time it's a little bit different i'm just tweaking them and topping them off from last time because last time i didn't even have a full rune set i just had almost a full rune set so this time for the reds we're going with nine flat ad reds we're going with nine armor yellows and we're going with 9 MR blues. Now you can kind of switch these out if you want. You can get some scaling MR, some scaling armor in there if you really feel like you need it. Or even you could try and get rid of two of the MR blues and get put in two CDR blues instead, kind of mix and match with them. Because it's not as important as the damage is, but it's still very helpful, especially early on with any early duels that you do get into, so then people can't deal as much damage to you. But then for the quints, we have, again, our two scaling AD quints. But the last one, we have a nice spicy flat lethality plus 2.49 lethality at level 1 quintessence. It's nice. Now we have our glorious one-shot build. This build is pretty similar to what you may have played before with Ringer or what you saw in my last guide. But it, it works. It's, it works really well. You With your Stalker's Blade Warrior or your Challenging Smite Warrior, I just suck with Challenging Smite. Don't hate me. I just, I'm not very good with it. Especially if you're against a squishy team, you don't really even need that. It's mainly for tanks or bruisers that you really need the Challenging Smite. Then we go Ionians. Please don't take Merc Treads or Ninja Tobbies early. Don't take Mobies either. You might want to move a lot faster. But you still move quick with these Ionians, and plus you're building items that give you out of combat movement speed regardless. So to have this, uh, the cooldowns on your summoner spells and on your abilities is much more useful than having cooldown on, or than having extra move speed. It's not really worth it at all. So just go with the Ionians, please. They're much better. Next, I would say build Duskblade first. And over Yomus, that is definitely what you want to do, but I'll talk about this soon. Um, Infinity Edge is definitely necessary. Build that pretty much right after your Duskblade, or just whenever you can, really, because it's a really useful item. Especially when you your ult gives you an automatic crit, so instead of dealing 600 crit damage, you're going to deal 800 crit damage. And then late game, you'll deal 1000 crit damage off your ultimate. It's ridiculous. And now, the part that I want to touch on with Yomus is that recently I tried building Yomus first, before my Stalkers. So what I did is I built my, tail, my Talisman, 
and then bef and three pots. But then bef when I got my back in, before I built my stalkers, I had 1,400 gold or 1,100 gold, whatever it was. So I bought a dirk and a control ward. Or if I had the, the gold, I bought a dirk and boots. And the, the advantage to this is that you get your Yomus so much earlier. You get the lethality in. The only thing you're missing out on is the smite from stalkers but you still get the CDR from Yomus, you also get out of combat move speed from the Dirk, and then you also get the active for Yomus, which gives you more move speed on top of the lethality it's giving you. So it's really useful early on. And then I build my warrior after that, my Ionians, and then I go Duskwade, I and the last item is interchangeable. You can go anywhere from a Ravenous Hydra, all the way to a Randuin's Omen. Like, the Randuin's Omen, personally, I didn't think would be that good of a, of a choice, but honestly, I was against a Trindamir late game, and it shut him down pretty hard. I was able to 1v1 him after that, so it was really, really worth it. But you could go with an Edge of Night, obviously, to max out your lethality and give you that MR, but if you're against an AD heavy team, maybe look for that Randuin's or Deadman's, or something that'll give you a bit more tank stats. Just, maybe the last item is more of a tanky item, even a black cleaver, instead of a full damage item like Bloodthirster. Now we're going to move on to sort of early ganking and how this works. Now I just want to show you guys the part of this clip here. It's not a, necessarily a really early gank because we're 12 minutes in, but it does kind of help a little bit with what I'm trying to convey here. So my ulti's in range, but I don't pop it instantly, so I get a little bit closer. I know I missed the cube, but just shut up. She died anyways and we can still kill the Nautilus, okay? But I'm going to illustrate basically what happens here. I'm going to show you guys on Photoshop just so I can really get you guys the visual and I can show you the control. So please, I'm going to show you on Photoshop, but just it's worth it. All right, so I am doing this live right now. I've got, I've got, you can actually see at the bottom here, I've got the, my video editing software open. I've got OBS open and I've got League open to get any screenshots I need. But this is, even though it's on Photoshop, this is just to sort of demonstrate what's going to happen. This is a really sort of crude drawing of what's going to happen, but it, this is something that's this is gonna, you're going to meet this in game. You're gonna, this is going to happen in game more than once. So this is sort of a scenario I've just set up top lane. The blue rectangle with rounded edges is your teammate and obviously the red star is your enemy. So when you're playing Rengar, your ulti has a certain range where you can jump from, but then it has a bigger range from where your enemy can see you and where you can see your enemy. So it gets bigger with level. So you can see them further away, but they can see you from further away, or they know that you're coming from further away as well. So the idea is that if this bush is unwarded, then, oh, sorry, if that bush is unwarded, then I, if I walk up in here, if I ult from here and I walk up in here, they will see me right there. Well, they won't see me, but they'll know that I'm coming. They'll get the little stars above their head, and then they'll run away. And by the time I jump on them, I get close enough, which is about there probably, I have to fight them fairly close to their turret, and if they do have a dash ability, like say this is a Fiora, then she gets another dash, and she's nearly at her turret, I've got maybe two, three stacks of Fury off of this, even if I do get four, I'll hit the root and she'll be stuck there, under the safety of her tower, whereas, instead, if I do this, if I walk up into the bush and wait till I get to maybe the middle or the edge, by the time I pop it, I'm out of the bush and she can see me when I'm here. She knows, well, she can't see me, but she knows I'm coming when I'm here. Hell, this has happened to me a few times where I'm here and now I can jump to you because I've popped it so late that I've gotten so much ground on you. You can actually see me through my camouflage and now I can jump on top of you. But even then, they might only make it to there. And now I'm on top of you. So please, use this, this big radius that you see. That's why you see me hovering over top of my ulti to see how much closer do I have until they see me here. How much, how long should I wait until I pop my ulti? Because if this bush is unwarded, take advantage of that. Get as close to them as you can as possible and then use your ultimate to hop onto them so they have the least amount of time to react to you. Alright, so now if we move on to the sort of teamfight aspect of this. Personally, when I play Rengar, I 
I play him differently than most champions just because I play him more like a a pick and split kind of champion. And what I mean by that is I'll I'll hunt for people who are alone or in groups of two. Obviously looking for those squishies because I'm not going to go solo kill a 300 or a 300 armor Nautilus because that's just not happening. He's going to kill me with thorn mail before I do that. So what I like to do is find those those squishies and then obviously one shot them and then push that lane up maybe get objectives do whatever i can just keep pushing in the lanes and applying pressure to the wound okay just keep pushing in the lanes and take the turrets obviously if there's somebody there and you can't take the turret then don't try and force it just go back and farm it up you got a kill and now you get extra farm and that laner loses farm so it's it's a win-win for you if you can push up the turret though, how, like I am right now, I just walked over, saw there was farm here, and now I've pushed up the turret and put damage on it, and now I can sort of do that to Nocturne. That's where Challenging Smite gets ya. And now I can push it up a little bit more and deny Zed a little bit, maybe like a minion or two more CS. That's all I gotta deny him, but even then, that's, that's 40 gold lost if he misses two minions like that. So... There is a teamfight aspect to Rengar if you choose to play him as a team fighter, though, which he still does very well. He can sort of get to that backline and one-shot their entire backline, especially now with his AoE Q really, really well. So, basically, I've set up another scenario in Photoshop just so I can show you guys. This one will be a bit quicker, I promise. But I'll come back into this and explain it to you guys a little bit more after. I just want to show you guys the sort of idea behind it in Photoshop. Now, they, this might drag them over here a little bit to this bush, but if it doesn't, especially because you should have this uh, some vision of them, unless they cleared out all the wards because they're really trying to get Baron control, even then you should probably have a teammate because the team fight is probably going to begin. So you let your your tanks and your frontliners deal with these three horrible dive champions, okay? You let your tanks deal with these guys that are going to try and get into your back line after shredding your tanks because that's what these guys do. Lee Sin might try to get to your back line but Riven especially she's just gonna kill what's in front of her. So as Rengar you take this route around and if you can pop your ulti here sure they might know that you're coming but the closest target from here especially if you pop it here will be Riven so they might just assume that you're somewhere around here but if you come in around the idea behind this is that you should probably take out Caitlyn first, since Orianna has no sort of defense for herself. So you should kill Caitlyn first instead of having to kill Orianna and then let Caitlyn put down a trap and then you're done. So if you can jump onto the Caitlyn, if you ignore the Orianna, because she has no real CC unless she burns her ulti on you, and if she does, then your team will have a much easier time fighting their front line. You should jump on Caitlyn and uh, she'll get she's one shot she's dead okay you jumped on her she's dead and if you can collateral your Q through the Caitlyn into the Orianna that makes it much easier plus you throw your E at the Orianna which makes it a lot easier to chase after her and kill her afterwards so you really want to play this I know this is probably pretty arbitrary for you guys but you really want to just kill the squishies in team fights you want to get around and kill them especially since now they can see you if you get too close you really need to prioritize flanking in team fights more than just running up to them face to face all right so guys this is going to conclude the second guide to the new lethality rengar for patch 7.4 kind of 7.5 as well but mainly 7.4 since they are nerfing him a little bit in 7.5 but we'll see where it goes from here on out please let me know if i messed anything up or if you want me to if you want me to explain anything more specific because i've just been thinking about um i needed my build i need my mastery's runes i needed to explain what to do in fights um and just in general what i can really explain to you guys i can because i can convey i can tell you guys stuff in comments but i can't convey the same message that i want to tell you in the comments as i can in a video so if i can make a video about if i could even make a video dedicated to simply ganking instead of showing you guys ganking in photoshop like i did then just let me know and i can definitely do that so without any further ado i'd like to thank you guys for watching the second guide to rengar and let me know if you guys want to see any more for future patches see ya